Hello again everyone, I'm Jamie and welcome back to Trick Bricks. Over the years, most of my old Lego sets and pieces have been lost to the parts bins, down registers, in the yards of various homes, and who knows where else. But today, as we continue our expansive adventurers retrospective, I'm pleased to present to you a set that I rescued from the clutches of time and entropy, a childhood favorite of mine and the very first adventure set that I ever owned. Set number 5938, The Oasis Ambush, which was released in 1998, consists of 77 pieces, and includes three minifigures. About 90% of the parts you see here are from my original set, and the rest I picked up on Bricklink for just a few dollars. I also managed to snag the instructions, since my childhood copy disappeared ages ago. The front features the original box art, and the rear has a few alternate builds. Usually, these are always kind of meh for me, but I actually really like this one on the right. And this one here seems to depict the shockingly gruesome demise of Sam Sinister, with his top hat wearing skeleton chained to a palm tree. <laughs> I don't remember reading about that in Lego Mania magazine. But enough of just looking at the instructions, let's go ahead and put them to good use. Wow, this brings back a flood of memories. I remember spending hours upon hours with this set, conjuring up all sorts of adventures that culminated with this guy finally bypassing the mummy's curse and cracking open the tomb. This being the first adventure set I ever received, it was also my introduction to our main hero and villain, respectively. So let's give them a closer look. As I've stated many times, Johnny Thunder has always been one of my all-time favorites, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Sure, his printing details are a tad dated, but really, not much when you compare him to a lot of other minifigures from the same era. Timeless and unmistakable, everything works together here to form one of LEGO's crowning achievements. From the trademark slouch hat, the self-assured facial expression, to his classic tan shirt complete with printed revolver. Johnny Thunder has a well-deserved spot in my own personal minifigure hall of fame. And what would a hero be without an arch nemesis? Luckily, we'll never have to find out in Johnny's case, thanks to this guy. Even though he only appeared in the desert theme, I always imagined that Sam Sinister was still the one pulling Baron Von Baron's strings in later sub-themes. Maybe the real reason LEGO discontinued Sam is because he was just too darn good at scaring small children. That face print is deviance defined, and his head-to-toe black ensemble is about as bad as it gets. In a good bad way, of course. Clearly, neither of these figures feature alternate face printing. It would be several years before that would become even remotely common, so when we wanted a minifigure to look sad, angry, scared, or any other myriad of emotions, we imagined it. There was something more inherently simple and carefree about these guys, and even they were a far cry from the innocence of the original Lego smiley face. The last minifigure included in the Oasis ambush is this classic skeleton of the floppy armed variety. One can assume that he's the sole and permanent tenant of the tomb, and he's given this yellow Egyptian headdress to keep his dome warm on those cold desert nights. I've always loved this headwear element, and it was molded in several different colors for this series. I'm of the belief that you can never have too many LEGO skeletons in your collection, so this little guy fit right in as soon as I rebuild him. And now, back to the main attraction. This set features one of my favorite, now defunct, LEGO builds, the Jointed Palm Tree. For some reason, most likely cost efficiency, they have now moved away from this design completely, but there was a time when nearly every theme had several sets that included this tree. Everything from Pirates to Paradisa. And being out of production has driven up the value of these trunk elements considerably, with these individual sections fetching upwards of 50 cents each. That might not sound like much, but it adds up pretty quick when you're looking to expand your desert or beach scene. I really wish they'd bring this design back because the palm trees today just don't have the same versatility and charm. 
But moving on from there, we have this excellent build for a tomb. Interestingly, the instructions for this set on LEGO's website designate it with the name Anubis Chamber. I can't find it called this anywhere else, but it makes sense. If we start at the top here, you'll see this brick-built statue of, guess who, Anubis. Which not only looks nice, it has some functionality. If you look closely, you'll see that his body is made up of a black treasure chest, and tilting it open reveals four of these chrome gold coins, another LEGO element of which you can't have too many. Built up on two 4x12 tan plates, the main section of the tomb has some decent shaping with these blue slope pieces nicely accenting each corner. But what really completes the look, at least for me, are these hieroglyphic decals on each side. Not many of the adventure sets came with stickers, and it would have been nice if these were prints, but I'd definitely rather have these than nothing at all. And they've held up pretty well, considering that they're 20 years old and have spent most of their lives being jostled around in a container with thousands of other pieces. But this tile here is a print, and it's one we'll see in quite a few of the sets to come. It depicts the mummy's curse, with a character who bears an uncanny resemblance to Dr. Lightning opening a tomb and then subsequently getting fried by Pharaoh Hotep's laser beam eyes. Not a fun time. The lone scorpion stands guard over the main play feature of the tomb, which is actuated by this spear. It's mounted on a pin brick and attached to this chain here, and pulling back on the spear raises the lid. It's a pretty basic function, but it's so fun to mess around with. Inside, you can see our skeleton in his resting place, and also how the chain mechanism works, with it just going through this gap in the rear and attaching to the statue on top. I like that you're able to vary the speed of this action, either cracking the tomb slow and ominously, or having it burst open like an explosion. Again, a very simple play function, but it adds so much to the set. That about does it for the tomb, but we do have a few accessories that I'd like to quickly take a look at. We've already seen these firearms quite a bit, and you get one of each style in this set, a revolver for Johnny and a rifle for Sam, but the main item of interest here is, drumroll please, the final of our four maps. We finally completed the map collection, and interestingly, this one is the rarest of them all if you go by number of set inclusions, with this map only being added in two releases, the Oasis Ambush and the Sphinx Secret Surprise. It's marked with the number 60 in the bottom left corner. Overall, this set isn't going to blow you away with complex build techniques or fancy part selection, but what it will do is provide you with a fantastic little vignette. The entire premise of the adventure's storyline can be boiled down into this set. The race between Johnny Thunder and Sam Sinister to find some sort of priceless treasure. In my opinion, this, combined with its small footprint, makes it the perfect display piece if you're pressed for space and just want a bit of classic Lego in your life. So if you're at all a fan of the adventure's theme, don't hesitate to pick this one up. It's not going to cost much, usually hovering between $15 and $20 on eBay or Bricklink, so even if you're just beginning your own collection, this is a great starting point. Anyway, that's all I have for today. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on our next episode in the Adventurer's Retrospective series, the elusive and aptly named Adventurer's Car. Trust me, it's way cooler than it sounds. So once again, this has been Jamie for Trick Bricks. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care everybody, and play well!